Here we are, Meadow Hill Village. Nice. The only problem is we have no gold. We have no items. We're fucked. Do we get a starter kit? I take the time to catch my breath and discreetly rest my burning muscles. Leanna hardly seems to be affected by the long trek. How was this close? I thought you said this place was close. It is. It's only a half a day's walk. That is that is true. If you gotta walk everywhere, half a day's walk is close. I wait for her to say that she's joking, but she's completely serious. How was that close? I think we should have used Uber. <laughs> Uber. Oh, that's great. I'm sorry? I shake my head. Nothing. She cocks her head curiously, then shrugs. Let's continue. We can rest at the inn tonight. All right. Hell yeah. Oh, wait. We don't have any money. She resumes walking. I ignore my screaming legs and follow her. It looks like the, the tavern's like right there. If that's a bed, that red sign. The village is still bustling with people even at this time of day. I suppose they're getting their last errands done before nightfall. For the most part, everyone seems to be focused on their own tasks. They barely glance at Lyanna. But their gazes are drawn to me and they don't look away. Well, we're probably wearing like normal clothes. In fact, their steps slow and they crane their necks as we pass. Now I know how an animal feels like at the zoo. Leanna overhears my muttering and watches the people around us. It's your clothes. They're very peculiar. What? I'm wearing what is normal where I'm from. Even though she's stare I mean, I wouldn't technically consider- Ah, uh, it's a button down. Who cares? Uh, even though she stares directly at me, Leanna seems equally uncomfortable. Okay, new plan. Let's stop by the shops before they close. We don't need to draw attention to ourselves. Aw, oh, shit. We do get a starter kit. I instinctively pat my back pocket where I keep my wallet. I doubt they'll accept card here. Or dollars. I don't have any money. That's okay. I'll take care of it. Sweet! We get a starter kit. It was really generous of you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's understandable given your circumstances. I'll pay you back once I can. Lana smiles and nods. Lana changes the direction and leads me towards an adjacent street. There are rows of quaint shops lining both sides of the road. I read the signs as I walk. Edward's Apothecary, Flagstone's Ford, Dragon Scale Armory. Now that that sounds like a badass shop, Dragon Scale Armory. I probably want to check out the forge too. Uh What is it? I was just thinking how convenient that everything is in English here. English? <laughs> That's so great. I should have expected the same question based on our previous conversations have gone, but I'm still taken aback. What is it that we're speaking now? Common, obviously. We're speaking common. I'm just saying. This is also because I have like every single 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons book. Anyway, I'm outing my nerd self. Guys, you want to play some Dungeons and Dragons? What? Leanne pauses in front of the shop and peers inside. Satisfied, she motions for me to follow. Never mind. Come on in. We're here. Well, at least she didn't question it further. I step into the shop, and the first thing I notice is the overpowering Lee. Um. You could just say overpowering musty smell of leather. I love that smell. You step into the western wear shop and you just smell all that leather from the boots and the belts. Oh, I love that smell. Uh, it's so good. That's not surprising because then the walls are lined with different types of leather work. Um, excuse me, I thought you said leather work, not, not the apothecary. This looks more like an apothecary shop. A small elderly man emerges from the back. A pair of round glasses sits on his nose and an apron hangs around his neck. Welcome. Please, take a look around. His smile falters when he notices me. Liana clears her throat. 
We're looking for a new wardrobe for my friend here. Oh god, he's gonna be one of those people who's like, Ugh, his fashion sense is atrocious. Yes, yes, of course. The shopkeeper blinks back to reality and resumes his pitch. Well, you've come to the right place. We tan our hides and stitch the pieces ourselves. You won't find any finer quality than here. Leanna smiles politely and strolls towards the selection. I check out two seemingly identical leather vests, both of which are marked at different prices. I really can't see the difference between these two. Maybe they boost different stats. <laughs> Probably. Hey, Leanna. She turns around. Which of these will increase my... Dexterity. Um, I suppose leather armor will allow for greater range of motion while still providing decent protection. You gotta go with the rogue if we get the option. That's the benefit of the armor type. I mean dexterity. She blinks. None of these raise any stats? Lana gives me a weird look. Do your clothes where you come from raise stats? Maybe charming? Persuasion? Only if you consider cool points to be a stat. Some people do. She looks as confused as before. Never mind. She smiles as we continue perusing. One by one, Leanna and I pick out a new outfit. Once all the pieces have been purchased, she goes to haggling with the shopkeeper. I tune out their discussion and watch people passing by. Their clothing are simple in design, meant to be more functional than aesthetic. To my surprise, everybody walks around armed. This village doesn't seem dangerous, but looks can be deceiving. Why don't you get changed now? There's a space in the back to give you some privacy. I mean, just strip down and put it on. It's not a big deal. I nod and take clothes. <laughs> uh, once I ensured privacy, I quickly get changed. Luckily, these clothes have pockets that I can transfer everything over. I palm my wallet, deck of cars, and loose change. Next is my phone. Try to turn it on just to see if it works, but it doesn't react. The battery must be dead. I get the feeling they don't have wall chargers here. Shrugging it off, I slip the phone into my pocket too. Once I emerge, Leanna gives me a once-over. How do I look? She grins and nods in satisfaction. Wow, look at you! Just like a native! This look suits you! I match her grin. Thanks. Let's go find the inn now. Yeah. She heads out of the shop and I follow her. Actually... Maybe we could stop by the armory? She pauses and looks curious at me. Armory? You want to get a weapon? Her question is careful. Cautious. The goal is to blend in, right? It's weird that a person wearing leather armor is traveling unarmed. I look like a hostage or something. Hmm. You do have a point. Plus, it could come in handy. We gotta make sure we have our, we gotta make sure that we have our full starting gear. It's not fair. We're gonna get one shot by a fucking slime. Why do I not like the sound of that? Do you know how to use a weapon? Again, although her voice holds no hostility, I can sense her caution. I practice kendo competitively. Oh wow, it's a type of sword fighting from where I come from. I see. Leanna falls silent as she gazes out in the street. After an extended pause, she nods. We head to the forge where rows of blades ranging from long swords to short daggers hang from the wall. All the blades look fairly plain, but the steel edge glint dangerously amidst the warm glow of the forge. Unlike the previous shopkeeper, the metalsmith ignores us as he pounds out a red-hot blade. I mean... Wait, that just straight up looks like guns. They have, they straight up have guns here. I guess they're like energy guns, but they're straight up guns. Sparks jump from the clanging metal, reminding me of fireflies. Leon lets me browse the swords. I reach for one that catches my eye. I gently remove it from the shelf and miscalculate its weight and drop it. Mmm. Shit. The metal spins pauses his work and glowers a warning. Leanna looks on in shock. Careful! I quickly write the sword back up and grip it tightly. Leanna now watches me with intrigue. 
Is this the first time you've held a sword? I lift, bro. Hey, I can handle this sword just fine. I'm just really sore because of all the lifting I did before coming here. Good cover. Leanna's expression's hard to read. Lifting. Yeah, bro, I lift. I squeeze my biceps and take a practice swing with the sword. Feels good, man. Leanna stares blankly. I swing again and the movement flows naturally. Whoa, that was a nice noise. As the sword cuts through the air with a sharp swing, I can't help but admire how smoothly it slices. This is high quality craftsmanship. Let's go with this one. As before, Leanna discusses with the shopkeeper. When she returns, I strap the sword to my belt. Nice. We make one more stop to gather supplies for our travel. By the time we finish, the sun is set and darkness blankens the sky. The town is aglow with soft lights glinting from within houses and the lampposts on the street. As we pass a lamppost, I peek inside to see a small crystal shining brilliantly. Using the lights to guide us, we find the inn. I take a seat at one of the crude tables while Leanna talks to the innkeeper behind the bar. There is a scattering of other patrons, mostly men who sit alone, nursing a tankard of what I assume to be ale. I stifle a yawn. Now that I've had a chance to sit down, I feel the full weight of my fatigue. Luckily, Leanna returns and hands me a key. This is your room for the night. It's right next to mine. Damn. Next to? Thanks. She nods. They should be coming out with our dinner soon. Then we should get to sleep. We have an early start tomorrow. Which means at the ass crack of dawn... My stomach grumbles in anticipation. Sorry. Lena smiles as she sits in the empty stool next to mine. Our meals arrive and I stare at the bowl before me. It's a goopy, thick stew that looks about as appetizing as dog food, but it smells pretty good. Uh, what is this? It's stew. What kind of stew? Rabbit. Oh, that's not bad. Huh. A brief image of a cute fluffy bunny flashes across my eyes. Is something wrong? Oh god. <laughs> uh, meat is murdered is so good, but the best one is I only eat non-GMO, all natural, vegan, certified, gluten-free, 100% whole grains, non-trans fat, grass-fed, no preservative, organic pasture meals. <sighs> nope, I'm good. I'm all about trying new foods. Nothing wrong. This is fine. Thanks. I take a tentative bite of my stew. How is it? It's pretty good. It's better than I expected. Anna grins as she digs in. I finish eating and Leanna clears her bowl, then the two of us head upstairs. She pauses in front of her room and I stop in front of mine. Good night. Good night. I'm about to end my room when I hear a small voice. Polly? Oh yeah, that thing. Looking down, I see the Pongo back at my feet. Now that I think about it, ever since we entered the village, he's been awfully silent. Have you been following us the whole time, or did you just lose us to find us again? The Pongo blinks twice and bounces. Boy, boy. Pongos aren't exactly welcomed everywhere. Why is that? Well, they absorb the energy around them, including crystals which are used to light lampposts or other similar items. Oh, so they're nuisances. All right, that makes sense. I can see how that could be bad. I think this guy knew to stay out of sight once we came in here. That's smart. What if someone sees him here? As long as he doesn't stray too close to a crystal, he'll be fine. People only make a fuss when it looks like their crystal might be drained. That would make sense. I mean, as long as they're not actually hurting anything. Of course, I think he's more interested in us than the other crystals. Got it. She reaches towards the pongo. Do you want to sleep with me tonight? <laughs> Boy! The pongo snuggles against my leg. Leanna sighs. 
I thought as much. <laughs> Denied. She opens the door and flashes me one last smile. Sleep well. She disappears into her room. Open the door and step through. The pongo perks up. Poi poi. Uh, <laughs> no, my room. Nah, we'll let him in. We'll be nice to the pongo. I step away from the door and the pongo hops in. As I close the door behind him, he continues to hop around the room as if inspecting it. Yawning widely, I collapse onto the bed. The pongo continues to circle the room. Are you looking for a good place to sleep? Boy. He suddenly leaps up and lands on my bed. Then he bounces to the foot of my bed and wiggles himself into a cozy nest by creating a small crater on the top of the blanket. Can't help but grin at the little guy. Good night, pongo. Boy, boy. I roll over in bed. It's not long before I'm fast asleep. A knock on my door jolts me awake. I sit straight up in the bed, barely noticing the tiny yelp as the pongo trembles to the floor. Hello? The knocking stops. It's Leanna. Are you about ready? No oh, shit. I rub my eyes and blink at the feeble rays of light outside. What time is it? It's past dawn. We need to get a move on if we want to make a good time. Were you expecting any other answer than that? I wasn't. Dawn? There's no good reason anyone should be awake at this hour. My sentiments exactly. I attempt to lay back down in my bed when the knocking starts again. Alright, alright, I'll be there in a minute. The noise stops. I yawn and stretch and then notice the pongo on the floor. What are you doing on the floor, buddy? Weren't you sleeping on the bed? The pongo wingles and then shoots me an accusatory look. Poi, poi, poi. <laughs> you kicked me, you motherfucker! I glance at the slight indention on my pillow and then uh, the blue mass on the floor. Sorry, I didn't mean to knock you off. He looks cautiously at me, then hops onto the bed and then onto my head. Poi, poi. And now he's as happy as can be. He nips at my hair, then jiggles. I guess that means he's forgiven me. Push myself to my feet and start getting dressed. Once I've grabbed all my things, I push open the door and nearly collide with Leanna. Not again. Whoa. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Leanna nods and leads the way out of the inn. I follow her through the town as we head north. It's a lot quieter than when we first arrived as the town gradually begins to wake up. We don't run into too many people on the street. Although the shops aren't open yet, I can see the shopkeepers are busy preparing for the day. Right before we reach the edge of town, a guard stops us. There's been heightened bandit activity reported on these roads. Lana's brows crease. Are the roads closed? No, but until we get a handle on the bandit activity, we're advising everyone to stay in town. We can't stay. Where are you headed? We're headed to Illumia. The guard notices the sigil on Leanna's manipulator. You're a mage knight? She nods. As the guard turns his focus to me, I draw attention to the blade on my hip. He nods gruffly, then moves out of the way. Just be careful out there. Aw oh, man, that plot convenience. I mean, if we didn't have the sword, we might be fucked. Thank you. She motions me to follow her. Once we're back on the familiar dirt path, I take the last look at Meadow Hill Village before refocusing on the road ahead of me. Our trek along the path is peaceful. The forest gradually awakens with birdsong and the scuttling of woodland animals. Having grown up in the city, the sounds of nature still startle me and I glance at every rustle of the leaves. Lena, though, seems unfazed, her eyes routinely surveying her surroundings. Suddenly she freezes and I nearly bump into her. What the? Shh! I fall silent as she listens. When she speaks, her voice is in a whisper. Did you hear that? I strain my ears, listening to anything out of place. Then I hear the voices amongst the trees. Bandits? A strangled scream pierces the air, uh, scaring a flock of birds into flight. Someone might be in danger! A previous caution abandoned, Leon sprints towards the sound and I follow her 
and I follow at her heels. We both take cover as the trees open up, revealing a man in a trench coat surrounded by five bandits. One more bandit lies motionless on the ground. Upon seeing their fallen comrade, the bandits all unleash their weapons. Three of them hold long swords and two of them point guns. The trench coat man doesn't stir. His dark hair falls over his eyes and I can't see his face. Wow, he sounds like an edgy motherfucker. He won't get away from us this time. Take him out. The man pushes open his coat and draws two guns as the bandits converge. Lana sets her jaw. Stay here! As soon as the word falls from her lips, she raises out of the trees. Her hair whips behind her and her white coattails billow in graceful arcs. She moves faster than any human, as if the air is pushing her forward instead of dragging her down. Her gauntlet hand clenches and a blue sphere glows, then disappears as she smashes her fist into the nearest bandit. He flies away from her and crashes against a tree before crumpling into a heap. A mage knight? She must be with him. Or she's after the bounty. Take her out too. The mysterious man fires a hail of purple blast at the bandits, catching one of them in the chest. Lana deflects a sword from another bandit with her own blade. I can't just sit here and do nothing. I have to help. Ignoring Leanna's comment, I unsheath my sword and charge into battle. GG! Do you want to die? Because that's how you die. You just got to stand on the side and get the XP share. Uh, okay, and the uh, minigame will be in future builds. Uh, well, we're going to win the fight. Leanna breathes heavily as she surveys the bodies around her. She glances at me and the stranger who's still standing. Anyone hurt? I do a gentle pat down on myself and wince at my bruises. Nothing major. Leanna nods and then fidgets with her manipulator. Wow, he is an edgy looking motherfucker. Jesus Christ, fucking edgelord. <laughs>